Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover video on the 2009 Swift Sundance 530LP. To fill the vehicle with water, use the water key, which is marked W on this particular vehicle. This is lockable, so you can lock it once you have filled the water. Put the flat end of the hose in here, fill it until it overflows or you look on board your control panel and see how much water is on board. Then you pop your cap back on and lock it to stop anybody tampering with your water supply. When removing the cover for heating your water on gas, hand on the top, thumb in the middle, take it off, pop it in the driver's door pocket and when the driver gets in you can pop it back on before travelling. This allows the gas fumes out when operating on gas. When heating, on water, heating the water on electric, you don't need the cover off. It's just on gas to allow the fumes free of the exhaust. But when traveling, pop it back on because it stops the dirt from collating underneath the cover. To hook the vehicle up, get your hooker blade, lift the collar and lift the flap on the van. And you want to put the cap just over the connection and connect first. Always hook the van up first and then the sight and do it in reverse order when unhooking and it's the same when hooking up at home. Press this clip down to safely remove the hook up when removing it from the vehicle. To drain off your waste water, which is anything that you have put down a plug hole, goes into a separate holding tank on the way out of your site, go over the disposal point for your waste water or drive as close to it, open the valve and allow this out. You do not want to be driving around with waste water because all you're going to do is make the vehicle heavier which impacts on your payload and your fuel consumption and leave this open slightly when driving as the camber of the road will rock any loose water in the tank out and obviously in the winter make sure this is fully left open so no water freezes in this tank. To operate your toilet, opening your locks can be dead easy, you've got two keys, you've got one habitation, one water key. Press in, release, lift the orange handle and slide the vehicle, slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You can carry it or you can wheel it, depending on how heavy it is, to the chemical disposal point on site. And then to dispose of your waste, you would remove the grey cap Pop that to one side, press the orange button at the back, pour the contents of the cassette out whilst pressing just allows a bit of air and stops it glugging. Tip the contents out, once that's out put some water in, put the lid on, give it a rinse and then go in with a cap full of chemical which is 120ml depending on what the site prefers you to use. So there's two chemicals you can use, you can use a blue one or you can use a green one. Green ones are more environmentally friendly for septic tanks but some sites are still accepting the blue, it's entirely up to yourself. Normally the site sells the chemical anyway, so you may as well just carry both and use what they prefer. At the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light, you've got a bike rack. So that takes two bikes, to put the bikes on, put one bike one way, the second bike the opposite way is to get the handlebars on. Wheels on the rail. These through the spokes and tie the wheel down onto the rail, both front and back. And then the first bike's crossbar and the second bike's crossbar. And then we do recommend that you put some sort of bike lock around the bikes when you leave them on the bike rack, just so that they aren't stolen when the vehicle is left unattended. Reversing camera on the bottom here, so you've got your reversing lens just here. You can adjust that to where you want it. And you've got parking sensors as well on the back of this vehicle. To operate your gas locker, it opens with the habitation key and you'd push both catches in at the same time to release the door. And then you can fit two six kilogram propane bottles in here. This is my test bottle to show you equipment working on your vehicle. So you want to tie the bottle in if it's staying on. So there's a little grey collar which goes round the bottle needs to be tied in just so it's nice and safe and secure and it fits in the clips here 
To connect the pigtail, however, though, that goes from the regulator with your crash valve reset. So if you weren't getting any gas through, press here for 10 seconds to do a reset. To connect onto the bottle, it's left to tighten, right to loosen, opposite ways with it being gas. And this is a hand tightened pigtail. Turn the cylinder on at the top. And then before you travel, just make sure you turn it off just so it's nice and isolated and safe for you and other road users when traveling. Now on board the vehicle, to operate your 12 volt control panel, you've got a master switch here which turns on the 12 volt. If you are hooked up, however, you will get 230 volt from mains electric. You can then turn on your pump should you have sufficient water on board, make sure that you do have water on board. Don't turn your pump on if your tank is empty. And you've got underneath, if it's going to be frosty overnight when using the van in the winter months, you can put your tank heaters on and this will heat the water in the fresh and waste water tank to stop them going, to stop them from turning to ice. However, when not using it, drain it down. Pressing the middle button goes through the control panel display so you've got your time and you can tell that you're hooked up here then you've got your fresh and waste water levels you've got your leisure battery and vehicle battery levels obviously 14 volts is a charging rate so unhook the vehicle to get a true reflection of what the leisure battery is currently sat at and the vehicle however if you want to charge just the vehicle you can press this button here and it'll Put all the charge to the vehicle battery so that's great in the winter when you're storing the vehicle or it's stood on the driveway you might want to do a few days on the leisure a few days on the van just to stop it from going flat but when using it you want to be charging the leisure battery as this is the auxiliary battery that powers the motorhome down this side you've got your lights so you've got your own light at the top which is the outside light you've got your entrance light which is this light here you've got all your the ceiling lights and then you do have your bathroom light and your other lights around the van here so you need to turn all these on as these are main switches and then they are individually switched around the vehicle so to heat your vehicle on mains electric when connected to hook up this dial here is your heating so ultra heat so you've got one to nine which is your room thermostat nine is equivalent to 30 degrees so pick how hot you want the inside of the van to be and then you've got different power settings so you do have 2000 watts which is two kilowatts you've got 500 watts and you've got a thousand watts so normally on most sites throughout the UK you'd use 2000 but on smaller airs or CLs if you're abroad you may have to use 1000 or 500 depending on if you get a 6, a 10 or a 16 amp feed for your mains electric. But in this country you get the majority of sites give you a 16 amp feed so you should be fine with 2000 watts to heat the van. Underneath you've got the ultra store on gas which is heating your water. Your cover needs to come on come off the outside of the vehicle and you've got 30 to 70 degrees of how hot you want the water. And then it's dead easy, you just turn it down the gas flame and once it shows green, which it does, it's on. If that was to show red, it may show red for a few reasons. One, your gas bottle's turned off. Two, you've run out of gas. Or three, you've left your cover on the outside of the van. The cover must be off as it stops the exhaust from breathing and it's a safety feature that it stops the water heater from working so it doesn't allow the fumes back into the vehicle. So what you would need to do is turn it off, remove the cover, blow in the vent and then turn this back on and that eliminates any buildup of gas. To operate your fridge, which is a Fedford fridge, turn the fridge on here by pressing and holding. And then this is your source selector and this is your temperature. So you've got three sources. You've got gas, 
which works off the gas bottle. So make sure the gas is turned on and make sure you've pulled the gas through on the hob because if you've had it off for any length of time you'll hear it just clicking and um, you need to bleed the gas through the line so the best thing to do is light one of your burners on your hob brings the gas through the lines eliminates the air you've got mains 230 volt which you'd use if you were on a site or you were pre-chilling it at home prior to your trip and if you are pre-chilling it prior to your trip it's best to do the two couple of days before not only does this give time for the leisure battery to take a good enough charge you can turn your fridge on allow that to cool down and put your shopping in the night before so it's nice and chilled and then when you want to drive you can turn it on the battery setting the battery setting works off the engine so when the engine's on it'll send 12 volt to the fridge but it has to be down to temperature first so it acts like a giant cool box but on this fridge as you know there it says auto so you have an automatic feature so you don't have to go through each source if you don't want to it will automatically pick out the best source available in the van it will always prioritize mains 230 volt however when you are going wild camping and you've knocked the engine off it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas it's a safety feature in case you forgot to isolate your gas bottles and you fill them with diesel in a petrol station you don't want it to spark so it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas in this instance all you need to do is turn it on to manual so turned off the auto turned on to manual gas and it will light straight away just means you've overridden the fridge here you've got your temperature so one bar being the warmest five being the coldest and then when you're not using it you would turn it off and the last thing you want to do is shut the door as it's got a rubber seal on there it will cause air to be trapped and smells to form so just underneath the handle here if you lift this forward this is a little toggle and that goes into the hinge at the top and it means that you can leave the door in vent mode and it will allow air to circulate in and out of the fridge but do just give it a clean before you leave the door open in the kitchen you do have three gas burners one electric hot plate so your electric hot plate is this one here so do just be careful that you haven't knocked this when loading the van and then hook the vehicle up because it doesn't give you a warning that it's on there's no light or anything so do just be careful with that one then you've got your gas so you've got three gas rings allow it to cool if you've had any of the hob burners on including the electric hot plate before shutting the glass lid otherwise what will happen is you will smash the glass with the heat to allow them to cool down if they've been on for any length of time underneath you've got your grill and underneath your grill You have your oven you might just want to remove your grill pan and oven shelves while traveling as they can cause a bit of vibration or wrap them up in tea towels underneath here you'll find your plug for your electric hot plate if you need to isolate it and in the corner here you've got your gas isolation valves so it tells you they're always open, they need to be open to use any gas appliance, you can close them if you're having any problems with any gas appliance, so if one gas appliance is causing an issue you can isolate it like so and it tells you which one, which colour does which appliance, but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced, a technician will shut off each appliance and drop test the gas system to make sure it's working to the correct standards set by the National Caravan Council. To shut the door, just press in here, this locks the door on an evening and then as soon as you go for the handle you'll be able to open the door and you do have a blackout blind on the window and when the door's open you have a full fly screen which comes across. Just do be careful if you've got any dogs that they don't run through the fly screen when it is open. To work your Truma Ultra Heat Fire, which works on both gas and electric, 
The electric controls, I've previously already shown you how to heat the vehicle. To heat it on gas, if you're wild camping, you've got one to 10 here. If you push down and turn, and press the spark ignition here as well, and look in the pilot light hole, yeah, you see, there is the gas flame, so that's lit on gas. If you, you would use that if you're wild camping and you had no um, electric, or you could use it with the electric together to heat the van quick if you're away in the winter so that you're not sitting in a cold van. You can normally heat the van up on gas and electric within 10 to 15 minutes, whereas electric on its own might take up to 20 minutes. It'll just take the edge off the coldness in the vehicle in the colder months or when wild camping. And then this side you've got a one to five, which is a 12 volt assisted fan. Obviously when you're wild camping, you'll not want to use this because you want to preserve as much charge in the leisure battery as you can. So you would have it in, you'd, you'd have it turned off, which is in this position here. So it'll convect out the front of the fire and just gradually the heat will circulate around the vehicle. However, if you did want to use the fan, which you can use again on electric, so you can use this fan on electric as well as gas. So you've got manual, it'll blow down the various ducts in the vehicle, um, one in the washroom, one in the front there, uh, to circulate the heat. This is manual, so you will have to then intervene and turn it down or turn it off when the vehicle has reached temperature. Or you can have it on air, which is automatic, and there's a thermostat within the vehicle that will pick up the heat and control when it's on and when it's off on electric. On gas though, you will need to just turn the flame off when it's too hot or turn it down um, as it cannot relight on gas without you physically clicking the piezo ignition. In your wardrobe area, you've got a large hanging reel. Your TV aerial, so if you're struggling to get a signal, loosen this off, push the pole up, and use the toggle at the bottom to direct the aerial on the top of the roof so it will pivot the aerial. But always make sure before you travel you've pulled it in and you've tightened this nut so that the wind doesn't get underneath when travelling and cause any damage to your aerial. Freestanding table for dining, whether you want that in the front lounge or you want that outside if the weather's nice. And then at the back here you do have your trip tester so if you weren't getting power the best way to check is tripping the vehicle which you would press here as you can see there to trip we've got power on board and then you've got your MCBs and then you do have your fuse spur switches for your space heater which obviously heats the vehicle so that needs to be turned on to use the control on the side of the wardrobe here this is your water heater switch, so you can turn that on and off. That will just work automatically, so make sure that it's turned off until you put water in the vehicle, and always make sure that it's off if there is no water in the vehicle, otherwise it's just like boiling a kettle without any water in. So that's how you heat your water on electric. You can obviously use it on gas as well, where you remove the cover from the outside of the vehicle, and you can use them both together, which reduces the time it takes to heat the water, which is 10 litres at a time. And then you do have your battery charger, which is this one here. So that charges the leisure battery or the vehicle battery, depending on what you've got it selected to. So just leave that on. But this one, turn off before you unhook and then fill the water tank up, pull onto your site and turn it back on once you've got water on board. And this just shows that your hot water system's working and your water system is pressurized. So that water is up to temperature on both gas and electric. So underneath the wardrobe floor, behind the fire, is the location of your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. It heats the water and it heats the vehicle on either gas or electric. It's very important that in the winter months you drain the water out of the boiler when not using the van. Because if we experience a hard frost overnight, this water in here could freeze and cause damage to this boiler. And it's not covered under warranty, but it's expensive to replace because you can't repair them once they're frost damaged, you do need to replace them. And a boiler is over a thousand pound for a motorhome. So it tells you here, drain and closed valve. Someone, the last owners have put this on. And that valve is here. 
the little yellow valve. So at the moment it's lying down. When you want to drain it, all you need to do is get a hold of it and flick it up. So it lets the 10 litres of water drain directly out underneath the vehicle. You would then open all taps within the van, remove the shower head from the shower hose, and this will allow any water not to sit in there and freeze over the winter. You'd open the fresh tank and the waste tank, and then you would put the pump on for 10 seconds and no longer, just to blow any water out of any plastic pipes that are circulating around the vehicle. So all the water system is drained down. When you come to reuse it, close your boiler. So that's line it down like it's in the position now. Shut all your taps, assemble your shower head, put, put your plug back in your fresh water tank, fill your fresh water tank with a hose, Control panel on, pump on, cold side of the tap first, you'll get a pressurised flow of water. As soon as you then start to go to the hot side, it will cough and sputter and make all sorts of noises until it pressurises. And all it's doing is it's pushing the air out of here through the pipes to the tap until this boiler is full of water. So it could take up to three to four minutes, even five minutes. Don't panic, you're not going to break it, it will gargle the water, it will make some funny noises. Just let it do its thing until you get a pressurised flow of Water, start off with the kitchen tap and then work your way around the vehicle. Once you've done one tap, the other tap should be fairly quick. Once they're all primed, the system is then filled and ready for the season ahead. But please drain your water system down in the winter to avoid frost damage. Behind the driver's seat is a location of your fuse distribution board. So carry some spare fuses with you. If anything on 12 volt isn't working, to do with the motorhome side it's going to be a fuse if it's not the leisure battery so if you're getting power but something on 12 volts not working it could be a fuse so carry an assortment pack of fuses with you and get these off ebay amazon for five pound uh, and carry them in the van any problems you just pick the fuse out and replenish the fuses so that is where the 12 volt fuse board is behind the driver's seat on the side of your bench seat now in the washroom, to operate the toilet, ensure that the pump's turned on and press the blue button which will give you your flush. So you get fresh water flush, put a small amount of flush in the toilet before opening the blade which is this grey lever here. So slide it to the back of the van to the right, use the toilet, flush your toilet after use and then close the blade. On a motorhome, it has a fresh water flush, so your cistern is filled from your fresh water tank. So you've got no place for any pink liquid, like of some other motorhomes and most caravans. However, what you can do if you have bought the pink and blue together, don't get rid of the pink. You can put the pink in an empty spray bottle, dilute so much pink with so much water, spray the bowl, it is just a bowl cleaner, and then flush and then close the blade. It does exactly the same, it just cleans the bowl. Just on a motorhome, it all will run off your fresh water tank. So you get three green lights or red lights underneath here, depending on what the colour of it is, underneath this picture of the diagram of the cassette to indicate that it's full and time to take it out, rinse it out, obviously empty it, rinse it out and replenish it with chemical. Toilet cabinet. Ensure that your shower screens are tied back, bottom and top, before travelling. Make sure you're careful with what you clean your toilet, your shower screen, shower cubicle and your sink out with. No harsh chemicals as it will cause discolouring. So just use a microfiber cloth, some washing up liquid, some Dettol spray, no bleach. This does come over to here and then removing the turnbuckles top and bottom on the shower screen you can create your shower cubicle to block off the toilet your sink is also your shower tap so you pull that out so like i said when winter rising if you pull it all the way out and remove this shower head from here and lie it down it'll just stop any water from coiling up and causing any sitting and causing any damage and freezing and then when you finish just be careful when threading the hose back into the tap as the pipe goes into here 
and coils up. Your fresh water drain is in the centre underneath this hatch in the lounge floor. So there's two screws here and here. Unscrew this, this panel will lift off and bolted between the chassis members is your fresh water tank. There's a black cap, take that off, hand in the tank and there's a plug on a chain, pull that out and you'll drain off your fresh water, which you would do if you were winterising the van, not using the van for a while to stop the water going stagnant, or if you've filled the van with a full tank of fresh water and you're now ready to drive to your next site, which is a fair distance away, drain it down to 20 litres maximum and then you've still got enough water to stop, have a cup of tea, use the toilet, but you're not driving around with a full tank of water where not necessary, as you'll have more payload available for personal items. Whereas if you're going wild camping, you will have to take a full tank of water with you. But that is where the fresh water tank is on this vehicle. Underneath your bench seat, behind the drive, the passenger seat, you do have the location of your leisure battery, which is underneath here, and you've got a main 40 amp fuse. You've got your solar panel, which is charging your leisure battery when not hooked up. When hooked up, mains voltage does take priority. So that's flashing there to say the batteries are full. Battery charger, which obviously kicks in and charges your battery when hooked up. And then fitted to this fan as well is a pure Synwave two and a half thousand watt inverter. So it is wired to suit two separate sockets. So it's wired to the leisure battery with the cables here. It's wired to two separate sockets, which are here. Don't use the inverter when hooked up, because obviously you've got mains anyway. The purpose of the inverter is to be used when not hooked up. So you can turn it on here, there's a little switch. Top position that's on. And then you could use that when not hooked up to give you 230 volt from a 12 volt leisure battery so you can use that when you're well camping and not hooked up it'll give you mains power for a short time so you can use that quickly don't use it all the time because you'll just drain your leisure battery but you could use it say you wanted to use a, a, a hair dryer you plug the hair dryer in dry your hair then turn it off or a item as such like a kettle you can plug it into here or a laptop or charge your phones you can um, but don't use it all rely on it all the time when while camping because you're just flattening your leisure battery one fully charged leisure battery should last you three days off grid if you use it correctly in the lounge to make the double bed all you need to do is lift and slide your bases forward and then you can either put the backrests here or the backrests at the back If you pull them forward, let the backrest fall into position. There you have your double bed. The best way though is to turn them upside down as you get the flatter surface to sleep on and you don't get the bull nose, which is a little bit more comfy to sleep on the backs than it is on the front. But that would be how you'd make your double bed. So it's very easy to convert the lounge into the bed on the front of this model.